Well, welcome to the Herb of the Week with me, your host and instructor of the Botanical Medicine Study Course, Stephanie Georgia. There are all sorts of links in the program notes on how you can be the first on your block to become in the know about all things botanical medicine. We are now in April and in the Northern Hemisphere, it is spring. And spring is in full throng, which means dramatic weather of which North America seems to be going all out to express. So sorry for all the destruction so many are experiencing in this time. In traditional Chinese medicine, spring is the season of the element of wood. And the organ system that is the focus of this season is the liver and gallbladder. The liver is probably one of the most amazing and actually most abused organs in our bodies. It is the largest organ in our system and is involved in every aspect of metabolism. Many, many traditions focus on the liver during spring and with various religious practices having some sort of fast during the weeks leading up to spring or in the beginning of spring. And many of us are familiar with the concept of spring tonics. So for the month of April, we will be exploring some of nature's most valuable allies in our lives. The word that is most often used with liver herbs is alterative, which is a term that is not used in, with synthetic pharmaceuticals. The short definition for alterative is that it nourishes and encourages proper functioning of a system. We could use the word harmonize as well, in that an alterative herb brings an organ into balance and harmony by encouraging healthy functioning within a system. Which brings us to our first herb for this first month of spring, dandelion. The Latin term for dandelion is Taraxacum officinalis. Taraxacum is the word which comes from a mishmash of Greek, Arabic, and Roman terminology, and officinalis, which means the herb is used medicinally. It's an official herb in the pharmacopoeia, which I find very interesting that this, this term that's used all over the world is basically recognizing herbal medicine. I'll bet you didn't know that. I didn't until I really started studying this and I find it very interesting. In any case, we will be exploring this amazing herb that like our livers is very ubiquitous as well as misunderstood and abused an entire multinational corporation that makes bazillions of dollars trying to eradicate this lowly plant that I hope you will not, that you will come to realize is not a weed, but an incredible gift from the natural world. Taraxacum officinale, the dandelion or common dandelion is a flowering herbaceous perennial plant of the dandelion genus, and it's in the family of Asteraceae, which is formerly known as the Compositae family. So it might be a little confusing when you look into older botanical books or herbals, and some of the newer ones you'll see Asteraceae, and in others you will see Compositae. And if you Google either one, especially if you Google Compositae, it will send you directly to Asteraceae. So just so you know. The common dandelion is well known for its yellow flower heads that turn into round balls of silver tusted fruits that disperse in the wind. And you can also blow them and make wishes if you want. Now, these balls are called clocks, which I have never ever heard that in British and American English, but apparently <clears throat> that's what they're called. And because they're in the Asteraceae family, it's a defining characteristic of dandelion. Now, as you've heard me talk in former videos and we'll hear quite a bit about if you participate in the online botanical medicine study course, 
which you will find links for a free introductory lesson in the program notes if you want to take that course, in that the Asteraceae is known by two characteristics, a composite of flowers, which means that the thing that you are looking at, like that big yellow wonderful flower, is actually a whole bunch of little flowers, and that's the same in all of the members of the family. That's the defining characteristic, one of them. And the other is the taproot, and you'll see that in the right side of the slide. And what is interesting uh, is that um, each of one of these flowers produces an individual fruit, which we often think of as a seed, say in a sunflower, which is a member of this family. And these characteristics of both the flower and the top root is very important for healing because the Asteraceae plants, which include things like Echinacea, the focus of the plant is to transform sunlight inside the plant and into the soil. So you have all these flowers sucking up sunflower, uh, sun, and then they, the sunlight goes down through the taproot. So it's very healing to the soil as well as us humans. Now, dandelion does this in spades and should be respected for its contributions, not sprayed with cancer-causing chemicals to eradicate it. It's important for this plant to really look at how it develops, to comprehend how it interacts with and transforms the elements. What I find so interesting is how the leaves are patterned. Basically, so they can suck up a lot of sunlight in addition to the flower heads, and also that they collect water. So they will collect morning dew as well as rainwater, and it will slide down into the center of the plant where it can be dispersed directly to the taproot. I just think that's such a great design. I would have loved to have been on the pitch meeting when nature was figuring out how to do certain things. Now, dandelion should inspire us all and show how nature is constantly gesturing to humans in order to nourish and heal us. How many times have you seen a lowly dandelion peeking out from a crack in the freeway or a city sidewalk? What's so interesting is dandelion is good for the liver and it grows in places where there's a lot of pollution uh, and pollution stresses out our liver. So I find this very inspiring as well as telling about how nature and the plant and its relationship with the sun and our well-being, because it's saying, hey, I'm good for your liver, and where I'm at right now is really stressful to your liver, so please, please use me. Dandelion is used in many, many herbal traditions from European to Native American, Chinese, and Ayurvedic. Now, the herbal actions of dandelion are listed here, and it's di they're di diuretic, which means it makes you urinate. <clears throat> it's hepatic, which means it's very good for the liver. Cholagog, which means it focuses on the gallbladder and it gets your gallbladder and your liver to make bile, which helps with digestion, particularly of fats. It's a laxative, uh, it's a tonic, it's a bitter, and it's an alterative. Now, the big difference in the plant is the leaves are more focused on the diuretic properties. And something I learned many years ago, which has always amazed me, is that the drug, the uh, generic name is furosemide. And this is a very powerful diuretic. And the drug in the old days was you you had to take your pill, your water pill, which my grandma called it, and you also had to take these little packets of green powder, which my grandmother absolutely hated, but she was a very obedient patient, and so she did whatever her doctor told her, and she mixed that up and choked it down every time she took her furosemide pill, and the reason for that was in, in the old days, 
when people would take this diuretic, they would die of heart attacks because they were urinating so much that they were urinating out all their electrolytes, particularly potassium, which meant that their heart rates went off and they would die. So then the brilliant people in the pharmaceutical companies thought, well, let's give them potassium to drink with this pill. So people stopped dying of heart attacks and eventually now the modern uh, medicines of this drug, the potassium is included. And what is really interesting is that the drug furosemide is based on the chemical constituents found in dandelion leaf, but dandelion leaf already has high amounts of potassium in it, some of the highest levels in all of the natural world. So there you go. Now the root, you can see these wonderful tap roots of dandelion in this slide. The roots are more oriented towards the liver and it's very good at helping the liver produce bile, which aids in digestion. And there's also really good evidence that dandelion helps with diabetes. So it doesn't take it away, but it's a good thing to assist your body in coping with diabetes. And as far as I know, if you take dandelion in a tea form, it does not interfere with taking insulin or anything else like that. Now, the chemical constituents of dandelion, uh, this is a wonderful slide that I found on PubMed. And there's some excellent words for your Scrabble game that I'm not going to even begin to try and pronounce. But um, it shows that each part of the plant has a lot going on in it, and it's very, very healing. Now, dandelion has long been used in many different ways in culinary uh, concoctions as well as beverage. Now, dandelion wine is obviously made from the flowers. I don't know if, the, if you fermented dandelion roots, you would like it, but I don't, I don't like liquor in general, but um, some people do, but the, the flowers are obviously much more delicious. And I have a link in the program notes for several, um, several recipes. You can eat the leaves in a salad. Uh, it's very, very bitter. I personally like bitter greens and I've given you links for all kinds of recipes. Uh, if you don't like bitter, it's good to cook them. And I've given you a link for braised dandelion leaves and garlic sauce. And it's also very delicious as a coffee substitute. I don't know if Mormons in Utah were drinking this before everybody else was trying to find a, a substitute for coffee. And with climate changes, et cetera. Our coffee may not be available to us like it used to be, but dandelion will be with us. So you can drink that as a coffee substitute. Now in Chinese medicine, uh, it's called Pu Gan Yin, and it's categorized within the herbal actions of herbs that clear heat and relieve toxicity. And toxicity in Chinese medicine usually expresses itself in red, icky eruptions on the skin, heat, et cetera, like fevers. And in Chinese medicine, uh, it's mostly the root that is used. Uh, sometimes they will, they will put leaves in there, but for the most part, it's, it's the root. And it's thought to enter the liver and stomach channels, and it's bitter, cold, and sweet. So sweet and bitter aren't usually think, well, actually, if you sweeten your coffee, that's sweet and bitter. And it clears heats, relieves toxicity, and it's really good for liver heat with red, swollen, and painful eyes. So if you have a hot liver, this is your herb. It's also really good for promoting lactation. It's traditionally used that way in Chinese medicine. And you will find dandelion in a lot of the over-the-counter teas for lactation. Now, in Ayurvedic medicine, it's called dukha feni. And apologies for my Hindi. 
I, I basically only know namaste. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but this is what it is. I, I think the, the, the script is so beautiful. It's very pretty. Um, but what it does in Ayurvedic medicine is it pacifies the pitta in raka. And if you know what that is, or you have that, this is your herb. And uh, this herb is traditionally used to revitalize and detoxify after a long winter. As I said before, one of the best ways to take dandelion is by eating the leaves. The roots are quite bitter and best taken in the form of teas, capsules, or tinctures. And some supplements combine them. They'll combine the leaves and the roots, and sometimes you can take them separately. So you may not think that you can purposefully grow dandelion in your garden. It's like, why would you do that? But you can. And I've got a link in the program notes on how to do that. If you're going to harvest dandelion from your surroundings, make sure they're not being sprayed with something toxic. And I also suggest not picking them from roadsides because you will get a lot of toxic chemicals these ways. It's best to grow them so that grow it them yourselves or harvest from a neighbor's garden who's growing things organically. And again, there are links in the program notes if you want to learn how to do this. So however you choose to incorporate this amazing herb into your life, even if it means not getting all upset if it visits your lawn or garden, I hope you come to admire dandelion as I do as a wonderful gift from nature and an excellent spring tonic for this time of year. This is Stephanie Georgia saying thanks so much for spending your valuable time with me. Let me know if you would like to have a free introductory lesson into the botanical medicine study course by sending me an email link below so I can send you a link for a video and handouts. Until next time, be well.